Before discussing about ASIC design flow, let's know what is ASIC. ASIC or Application Specific Integrated Circuits can be thought of as an IC which is specifically designed to carry out certain tasks. Signal Processing Unit or AIML IC are examples for ASIC, whereas CPU cannot be considered as ASIC as it can perform all the operations. ASICs are extremely popular nowadays as they provide good performance as compared to general purpose IC for a specific task. But at the same time, making ICs for specific purpose increases the overall cost of design. In this video, we will see different steps involved in designing of ASIC, popularly known as ASIC design flow. This is a commonly asked question in any VLSI interview, so knowing the steps in detail is always beneficial. System Specification This is the step from which the design cycle begins. In this step, all the specification of the IC is determined as per the needs. This involves defining of the input-output pins, different functionalities of the chip, timing diagram for different signals, power related specifications, IC dimensions, etc. Also, operational condition for the chip is defined in this step as different operational condition need different types of fabrication process. Architectural Design In this step, system level block diagram is created for the chip. The functionalities are broken down into different components which will be required in the IC. Also, the interconnect protocol for every module is defined in this step. For example, any one protocol amongst AMBA AXI, AHB or ASB can be chosen as an interconnect protocol. RTL Design RTL, as we know, stands for Register Transfer Level. In this step, the different modules defined in previous level are converted into RTL code. All the complex functionalities of a module is broken down into Boolean equations, which is used to then write the RTL code. This code will later be synthesized into transistors and gates. RTL codes are mainly written in HDL or hardware description language such as VHDL, Verilog, etc. Design Verification This step is also called Functional Verification as functionality of chip is also verified in this step. This is a very crucial step in the entire flow as any bug which escapes from this step can cause a huge loss to the company. This step is carried out in parallel with RTL design step and the two steps go in iteration until the RTL code is free from bugs and all functionalities have been verified. In this step, automated test bench is made for the modules or ASIC using different verification methodologies like UVM, OVM, etc. Synthesis In this step, the RTL code is synthesized into get level netlist. This means that the RTL code is converted into the physical components like wire, registers, gates, MUX, which is also known as a standard cell in VLSI terminology. Also, each cell have input output pins and the interconnection between them is also synthesized. DFT insertion DFT stands for design for testability. In this step, different circuits are inserted into the synthesized netlist which helps to detect any problem in IC once it has been fabricated. Mainly, different scan chain techniques and JTAGs are used to achieve this. Formal Verification 
In previous step, we have seen that few more additions are done in the netlist and it is possible that any bug might have been introduced in the netlist. Thus, netlist needs to be verified for correctness. In this step, the RTL code and the netlist are reduced to their boolean equations and are compared. If both are same, then the netlist is correct. Functional verification is not used here as functional verification is tiresome and functionality of the RTL code has already been tested. Floor Plan In this step, block placement is done for the chip. It can be considered as planning different rooms for a house where internal placement is not taken care of. It includes block placement, design partitioning, and pin placement. This is the first step in the backend domain of the ASIC design flow. Cell placement. In this process, standard cells are placed inside the blocks created in the previous step. It is a very crucial step as poor placement requires larger area and degrades performance. It can be thought of as planning the interior of a room in which more focus is given to the efficient packing of commodities in a room. Clock tree synthesis Every sequential circuit or standard cell inside the chip requires clock. In this step, the clock is routed to different circuits or cells of this chip, keeping in mind the timing constraints of the design. Clock path length is optimized to meet the constraints as longer path would have more path delay. Physical Verification In this step, Two checks are done which are also known as sign of checks. Layout versus semantic. In this process, it is verified that whether the geometry layout matches the semantic or the netlist. Design rule check. This is the most important check in this step. In this process, it is verified that the design meets the constraints given by the foundry. Post Layout STA STA stands for Static Timing Analysis After complete design is done, the parasitic resistance and capacitance is extracted from the design. We know that due to the parasitic elements, the extracted RC and the expected RC would be different and thus the path delay will be different from the expected. In this step, it is verified that the timing constraints are met as per the specification. GDS2 Generation GDS2 stands for Graphical Database System for Information Interchange. This is the file which is used by the foundries for chip fabrication and thus the design needs to be converted into this file before sending it to the foundry. This step is also known as tape out. Chip fabrication. The chip is fabricated in foundry according to the required technology node. The entire chip fabrication process is quite complicated and comprise of many steps. Discussing about the complete fabrication process is out of the scope of this video and a separate video for that will be made in future. After fabrication of chip, mechanical and electrical testing of chip is done in foundry and sent back to the design company. Post silicon validation. This step is carried out after the chip is received from foundry. In this step, the chip is validated by using it in real scenario. 
For this, a physical test bench is made using FPGAs or other techniques and chip is validated against the specification. Finally, the entire design process is complete and the chip is ready to be introduced into the market if validation is successful. ASIC Design Flow also has a front-end and back-end domain in the design cycle as any software development cycle has. Front-end domain deals with the design part which is directly visible to the user like functionality of chip etc. It can be compared to the front-end domain in software development cycle. Till DFT insertion step, the design process comes in front-end domain. Backend domain deals with the design part, which is not directly visible to user, like the chip layout, etc. It can be compared to the backend domain in software development. From the floor planning step, the design process comes in backend domain.